More than 50 episodes of the Jeremy White Podcast are available on demand. That's almost as many times as Paul Stanley yells, People! at a KISS concert. That was a joke. <laughs> oh, you see I'm smiling. <laughs> An all-new episode of the Jeremy White Podcast. Tuesday at noon. Available wherever you stream. Catch up on past interviews and episodes on demand now. Subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Oh, wow. I, say, man, I, I went and saw Phil solo three years oh. ago, man, and his son is unfucking believable, man. Yeah, he's he's, like, he's the real deal. I mean, he plays everything perfectly like Phil, man. It's mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. What is it with yeah. rock stars' kids these days being talented? Yeah. No, man. Go okay. figure. You think it's in their DNA or some shit? I don't know. Yeah, it's know. like you grew up the, around it. Like at the yeah. uh, at the last uh, Sammy Hager show, uh, Jeremy was like, "I can play this song. I know this song. I can play this song." I was like, "Jesus <laughs> fucking!" I was Christ. so not okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brand new singles called "Red Light Appetite" is available now. Uh, brand new music videos, phenomenal too, which I want to talk about because you got a guitar player in there looking way better than Trev does playing that solo. One thousand percent. <laughs> Brand new like album, going to be the great. debut record, limited edition Psycho, going to be coming out early in 2022. Uh, we're going to talk all about this. Welcome to the show for the first time ever, Andrew Hagar. And yeah. his big return to the show, Trev Lukather. There he is. There we go. Bonjour, as we say in Montreal. Bonjour. Okay, boys, so talk about this. How, how do you guys hook up originally to work together? How, does it, how did this whole thing happen? Backstage at a chicken foot show. Uh, I was introduced to Trev over a decade ago and we just immediately hit it off, you know, started shooting tequila and kind of the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like all good collaborations. Absolutely. I mean, we, when we, when we met, it was, we just, it was an instant brother vibe and, and just had a blast with each other. And uh, yeah, man, we became, Super tight, and yeah, it took this long to work together. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other, other than you know, we the old band um, that I had, we Drew invited us out for the Sammy Hagar Beach. Um, he would do a show. It was at Laguna Beach. Where, where is it? It was down, in, down in Huntington Beach. It was a big festival. Beach. Sadly, it's no longer around. There were some uh, some issues that we won't get into. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Drew invited us out to play with him and do some songs with his stuff and then gave us two or three songs to jam ourselves. And, and that was kind of the initial first time jamming together. Mm -hmm. And when, um, when my old band disbanded, it was, I was really getting into production. I was already producing and Drew was, you know, really wanting to, you know, pop the cherry together as far as mm -hmm. working together. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, man, come over to the house for two weeks. Let's just work every day. And a lot of magic was made, man. I mean, I can't, I can't deny that the, the universe aligned and everything we were doing, we were just like, this is fucking cool. Yeah. Because I remember yeah. seeing on the Instagram stories and stuff, you guys were in the studio together. I'm like, okay, well, this is a really cool collaboration. And, you, you know, you'd be playing samples off the computer and stuff, hearing, hearing clips. And I'm like, oh, this sounds really good. So then when the song finally came out, I'm listening to it in the car and I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. This is this is some proper rock and roll music that these guys are putting together uh, in the studio. I mean, what's the what's the process like? Like, who came in with a riff? Would you come in with a melody, Andrew? Or how does it work? No, I mean, for the most part, Trev, you know, came up with all of the music ideas, and then I would basically write to it lyrically. You know, we'd come up with some good melodies and just lay it all down and put it together. I have to tre credit Trev with pretty much all the production and music. He's, in my opinion, in my estimation. A musical genius. He's got oh. the you know? <laughs> I Venmo I Venmoed him before this interview. By the way. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, like I, I really just have to give it up. You know, I'm more of a songwriter. I'm not like an incredibly talented musician. Uh, I do love some good words and some good melodies, but you know, I think that's why the collaboration came out the way that it did, because Trev brings so much to the table musically and lyrically, and from a production standpoint. And, you know, I have just a really weird mind and I grew up writing a lot of sad boy poetry and shit. So it just works, you know. Right. Well, Drew, Drew's lyrics are so original and so out there and cool. And, you know, I wanted to really get to like, because we went and did drums first. So we kind of mapped out the songs before Drew came to the house so we could track drums right off the bat. 
And, you know, but we had Melody's ideas and choruses and stuff mm-hmm. like, like that. But Drew really like sat up in, in, in the room and just, we would be building up the music track and Drew would be upstairs writing lyrics and would come down with just such epic stuff, man. And um, <laughs> it just, it really came together so easily, you know? Yeah. And I, I think Drew has such a unique style. He's not, he's not Sammy Jr. He's his own person his mm-hmm. own tone, his own uh, delivery, it just, it's his own thing. And, and I felt like, man, we can make some kind of like modern grunge, but like real in your face rock and roll. It's something that Drew yeah. hadn't done yet. And, but his heart was always there, loving Queens of the Stone Age and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So it's like, let's yep. do something that when I hear his voice is so, so him. Mm-hmm. And he went into the studio, went into the vocal booth and it was just like, it was it was the stars aligning of of just how that fits so well and his writing fits so well with the tracks we were building and and it just it was so much fun man and it was you know after my old band i was so kind of like you know the the, the nerve was still a little raw you know and i yeah. and actually to like make music and have fun again and like be like oh this is why this is why we do what we do you know right. and so, then it was just it, you know we spent my birthday recording and, yeah. and then yeah. spent the worst hangover day of life on the, yeah. on the, on Cinco de Mayo yeah. getting through. Nice. But and we, we tracked so like two much songs done. that day. Yeah. I think we what? tracked two songs that day. Both yeah. 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 We just knocked it out. It was crazy. No rest Shot voice. Yeah. So all, all the music for this stuff, you know, with this project, I mean, were these fresh ideas that you came in with or is it kind of like leftover Lavara demos or like, no, 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 no. I, I thought like, let's build something completely and new, you know, let's, yeah. let's do something that has nothing to do with anything actually that I've done. You know, it's like, yeah. I, I wanted something specifically. That's why it hit me up. It's like, let's do something together. Let's, let's have this, this really cool, unique um, combination. And, yeah. and so, yeah, it was fresh ideas off the bat and I would just send him stuff and a few ideas didn't make the cut. And then the other one, for the most part, everything was kind of, vibing and coming together yeah. drew yeah 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 because when i heard the song i, I mean i was gonna say you know you talk about drew's voice and everything it's 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 to me it's very original like as soon it as is. i heard it i'm like it, it doesn't sound like anything that's on the radio right now it doesn't really sound like any other rock singers and really i mean it, it really does have an, a unique kind of original sound to it which is what grabbed my ears right away yeah well, thank you very much <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> talk about that though i mean like how did, how did you find your voice uh, I mean, you know, I've had experience singing since I was a kid. I was in choir. Uh, the school I went to uh, had a very diverse education program. So, like, you know, we had to sing, play music, do all this stuff. But I really didn't start singing in any real sort of capacity until probably, like, 2012, 2013, when I first started, like, dabbling mm. with music here and there. And I've been, you know, working really hard to find my voice since then. And obviously, like you get inspiration from everywhere and from the artists that you love. But I see so many artists out there trying to be other people, especially in like the rock sphere these days. You've yeah. got a lot of bands that are trying really hard to be other bands. Well, Greta Van okay. Zeppelin. I mean, come on. I mean, Hey, those guys are great. I don't have any problem with those guys whatsoever, but, uh, <laughs> Not I why, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's really important to find your own voice and find some semblance of originality. I don't want to be, I mean, it's impossible for us to not play off of our father's legacies. That's just, Mm -hmm. you know, part of life, but I'd like to build my own legacy as a singer, as a performer and really lean into what I do and not what somebody else has done before. You know, is is that a bit of a struggle though? I mean, with, you know, I mean, even Trev with your dad being who he is and, you know, with Sammy, it's like, are you constantly under that guise of fan saying like, you know, cause I look at Wolf Van Halen and you see all the shit that he gets online. People like, Oh, well, you know, he's not his father or this and that. Like the, 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 you get that shit too. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's like, that's like, I mean, I don't know, man. It's like, I don't want to like stir up any shit, but it's like Jesus having a kid and being like, well, where's the water and the wine, man? You know, yeah. where's the, where's the healing? <laughs> Where, I'm blind. Why can't I see? It's, it, you know, there's, <laughs> there's one, <laughs> there's one Jesus, man. You know? And, and I feel like, like I always say, you know, we're all rock stars in our own right. Like right. everybody that walks Mm -hmm. this planet are rock stars in their own right, whatever they choose to do, whatever connects to them. I feel that we're all here for a purpose, all here for a reason. And, um, and, you know, you find your way 
and your influences are always there. They're always going to be there. Mm -hmm. And you take what you can from that and make it your own. And you, and it's just a big gumbo of a bunch of stuff, you know? Um, so yeah, we always have a little hint of that, but that doesn't define us. And I think Wolfie is incredible. And his voice, man, like when I first heard his voice, like, wow, yeah, it was just, it blew me away. Um, and his stuff is just, furthest from Van Halen, but that's good. It's what it, it's, you know, he doesn't yeah. need to be doing Panama part two, you know, <laughs> and, and then you know what to be on even a rock and a hard place. And, and Andrew and I are too. It, it's, yeah. it's, you're never going to satisfy anybody. Yeah. You know, by doing you're that. always going to be pissed that you didn't make Panama part two for Wolfie. But then if yeah. he made Panama part two, they would hate him for it. Oh, and well, he, Andrew didn't do, I can't drive 55 part two. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> Well, oh, yeah. I, and I'm not making Africa part two either, man. Right. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm hanging up. Never mind. <laughs> Good. Well, I don't know, man. You know, fuck it. I'm out. No, but, 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 soon enough. <laughs> but there, there is a, there is a, a point where you, you, you sort of have to tip the hat to what your parents did, yeah. but you have to not be contrived about it. You also have to not give in to the fans that go, well, Trev's got to do a Toto set. Where do you find that fine line where you go, okay, I'll, 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 I'll tip the hat, but I'm still Trev, I'm still Andrew, I'm still Wolf, I'm not a fucking tribute act. I mean, I think we found it here with the music, you know, right. like, we're, we're kind of paying an homage to, you know, previous generations of rock and roll and hard rock. Like, clearly right. you, can, you can hear some of the influences in the music. Right. But like, it's also, like you said, really original. I have my own kind of voice where, yeah. you know lyrically doing things that people don't typically do in rock and roll because i come from more of a singer songwriter kind of folk background and i just think that yeah again like sure everybody wants to pay homage to the greats that came before them but i just really think people need to lean into their originality and that's right. what we're doing here we're forging our own way let me ask you about really that you you say you come from a singer songwriter background where does that come from because you've obviously been in and around what your dad's done from Montrose and Van Halen. So you're in, you've been around a rock background. So where did you discover your own singer songwriter stuff? Where did that come from? Where you sat in the room and said, you know, I'm going to listen to Joan Baez or whatever. That's all my mother. My mother has fantastic musical taste. She was really active during, uh, you know, the, the summer of love and all of the amazing music that came out of that era. And she introduced me to that from a young age. You know, my parents got divorced when I was a kid and I spent the majority of my time with my mom on the ranch. So, you know, she she was a, a performer herself, a folk singer and uh, more of like a kind of alternative country kind of cowboy poetry singer. Um, wow. She's yeah, she's released some fantastic albums, like really, really low key stuff. You probably can't even find online at this point. But <laughs> That's really where the majority of my inspiration came from early on in my career. I mean, I grew up like really into, you know, punk and hardcore and industrial and all these like really aggressive styles of music. And I messed around a little bit with some friends and like a like a punk jam band and stuff. But like when I really started writing my own music, maybe it was because of like my limitation as a guitar player. But, right. you know, I was I was writing songs in the same style of like Bob Dylan or those old kind of folky people. So, you know, <laughs> gotcha. yeah, but you said you and, grew up. Yeah. No, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I'm just going to ask uh, Trev the same question because, you know, you, your, your, your mom, you know, she went and did her thing, but Trev, where did you get yours from? Because ultimately your dad probably played on it. He's played on like 50,000 records, the poor man. I mean, you know, so crazy is what Drew just says. Exactly the same as me, man. I mean, like my mom is, is, was my taste maker when I was growing up. Really? He had great taste in music, you know, Mr. Mr. Duran Duran, ordinary <laughs> world, yeah. Peter Gabriel, like that, that kind of music that I grew up on. And you know, cause pop, our dads, like when you're doing music all the time, you don't come home from a long tour. Like, let's jam some some yeah, new music. No, right. <laughs> or like, I just got home from the studio for 12 hours. Can't wait to hear, you know, <laughs> let's play some more music. It was none of that, you know? So my mom was always the person when mm -hmm. we were hanging with her and dad's on the road, like jamming the songs. I mean, I have these, these memories, like they were yesterday when I was like three, four years old in the back of my mom's car and she's just like blasting ordinary world from duran duran and blasting yeah. like in your eyes and and all these incredible songs, songs. Man, yeah. that like 
that just stuck with me where it was just like, I was, that's the kind of sh- stuff I wanted to listen to, you know? Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that. Cause it's like, you know, even for the two, for me included, my tastemaker was my mom. Like I remember being in her car, being driven to elementary school and we'd have, she'd be blasting technotronic pump up the jam, but then <laughs> poor soul. he'd also put on, you know, a foreign lawful carnal knowledge and I'd hear top of the world. And then I'd hear ACDC and then I'd hear a uh, Shania Twain. And like, you know, yeah. I was exposed to all of it. And I think it's the, the, I think it's the people that are exposed to the most possible that are the most creative. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah well, it's funny because I didn't, I didn't have any of that. Uh, I live in a place or lived in the place where there was just nothing going on. And so I just found records <laughs> sitting by the machine. And I just played them. So I don't have that, that whole, my mom did this or my dad did that. I self-discovery. Very yeah. exciting. Well, that's great. You know, Very exciting. Yeah, fantastic. But you it's know, funny because I, I was around the music with dad, you know, I would go to the sessions. I was a leg hugger, you know, I would just like hang out, stare, watch, listen, and always wanted to be a part of the, the, the gang. And, and I got hooked. I was playing drums at four years old and jamming with pop and all a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, as far as I can remember, I was a musician, but obviously I was hooked by the people around the house and going actually to 5150 studios and hanging wow. out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because Pop and Eddie were so close, uh, and just hanging out, Wolfie and I, like little kids, just like Drew. You know, um, it's crazy. It took as long as it did for Drew and I to meet, but uh, yeah. but you know, it's it's that was around. That was like huge influences on that level of like being around incredible musicians and and just being like whoa, and seeing it in real time, like being there behind the scenes. That is insane. But actually, like what songs you listen to on the radio right. or what songs still hold here in my heart are, are a lot that came from mom. So it's crazy. Drew. Yeah. That's so nuts that we have this, you know, that, that, know, that man. Theater, man. yeah. Well, cool, let me quickly just ask you about the business. Cause you, you've been around it since you were kids. You've seen mm-hmm. the good, you know, the, the, the big tours and the, 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 the singles, and, but You've also seen the lawsuits. You've also seen the psychotic fans. You've also seen all that back stuff. And, and some of the lawsuits that, uh, y- you know, Toto have gotten in have become infamous. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's, let's not kid ourselves. It's not a good thing to be infamous for. <laughs> no, but, but, but some of those lawsuits are, are pretty, pretty insane. But pretty intense. Do you, do you learn from, any, from anything from that? Or, or, do you, or did it yeah. sort of say, go, oh, geez, I got to maybe not, maybe I should just go be a banker and not fucking yeah, think, deal with I this think, business. I think Drew, Drew and I learned by being solo artists and not having bands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what you say solo for as long as you can. I mean, Trev, look what the fuck happened with the last band. I mean, like, at that point, does that discourage you from even wanting to join a new project? I mean. 1,000 million percent. What, like, like, for me, what I loved about producing too was you get to get into the room with an artist and you fucking have a great time. That, that special moment of like bonding and creating and, and that excitement is there. And then you're like, go do it. You know? And like, that's it. Like you don't yeah. have to be in a van or stuck in like a small bus with, with them. And, and then like this, and then you're battling like, cause when you're producing it, there's, there are roles, you know, like, yeah. like you, everyone knows their role in, in, in the scene, you know? So mm-hmm. there's that awesome mutual respect, but when you're in a band, it's battling of like these petty things that like build up and resentment builds up and, and not just being grateful to be there. You just have to be, there's gotta be more and more and more like, uh, then he starts like, I don't have enough say or whatever. And, and you're just like, what? And instead of talking, it's just like people behind each other's backs. And, and yeah. you know, if management isn't communicating well, it's just builds, 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 builds. So, I mean, it's just hard, man. It's like, you know, being in a marriage, it, it can be really yeah. tough. But if you're married yeah. to three other people or two other people, <laughs> it's just, it could get so brutal. And then everyone's telling them how, Oh, you should do this, or like you know, everyone's in everybody's ear. Like you, mm-hmm. you, yeah. you, you yeah, th- this is how management works. You know, yeah. a- Andrew's the better part of this the, of this relationship. He, yeah. He's oh. the much. He's the talent. Andrew, you know, you're the talent. You go to the and drummer then, and, and then, say, you know, you don't. We don't really need that guy. You know, we'll just yeah, get him out. And 
They don't, you don't have to pay a, a drummer. Points, Get a machine. A and they're, well, like, everyone's click is going to tell them, no, yeah. you don't need them, and they don't need you. Right. And then, yeah. Yeah. Well, Andrew, so, I mean, does that discourage you from going in and potentially putting a band together, and you're just going to stick to, you know, I'm Andrew Hagar, I come in, I hire my musicians, they do the show, they go home, you know, they don't, it's, it's me, I'm the guy, and you guys are just here to fill a role, or do you see yourself putting together a proper band and being an entire, a congl a a group, so to say. I mean, to be completely honest, like I'm a very open-minded person, you know, when it comes to everything. And I haven't ruled out the possibility of putting together some sort of band or project like that. But for the time being, it's just working so well, being a solo artist and a solo musician. And I'm going to ride this out, you know, as long as it takes to find something that feels good. You know, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Trev said it before, like, it's so nice to be in the studio and have this great vibe and to have guys coming on that are more like hired gun musicians to play the stuff for live shows. You know, there's an understanding there. Like Trev said, uh, everybody kind of knows their role and everybody's supportive to a certain degree and not trying to be, you know, not trying to have 16 different chefs in the kitchen, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I mean, but I, I absolutely haven't ruled out the possibility of, of having like a project project. I think if Trev, hadn't had the kind of experience that he had with his previous one. And I hadn't had a similar experience, you know, who knows, maybe we would have like a, you know, project together that was more like a band band, but as yeah. it stands right now, I love what we're doing. You know, we're able to like <laughs> maintain our friendship, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. the most important thing to me at the end of the day. Um, Same. And, yeah. I think it's beautiful. And, and Drew watched it all happen real time. Yeah. Too, you know, he, oh, yeah. would be, he would be my therapist, you know, like, I'd be calling him like, man, this week, the, dig, dig what happened this week, you know, that kind of <laughs> stuff. And, and Drew would just be like, man, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and actually it was funny because even like the talk, I just said, I think it was even like, hey, man, should we do this as a band like you and me? And I said, dude, I love you and I want to love you forever and I want to be <laughs> friends. Yeah. yeah. Let's just do this. You run with it. You, you know, I'll right. come up and play with them, jam with them as many times as possible. But as yeah. far as like when you have to like decision making and always, I just don't want anything to do with it. And, and when I started my own project too, this new thing coming out next year, mm -hmm. I called everyone I wanted to work with and like musicians that I, you know, always wanted to fucking track with and, and Isn't it, that the best though? Because you, it was you're the really best, man. It was the best, and everyone was so cool. And every no one was like, if I wanted to change a part, it wasn't, uh, you know, it didn't lead to a therapy session. You know, it's like <laughs> you, you, you get to, you get to just have a blast and no egos in the room. It's mm -hmm. great. And I'm like, how can I go back at that point? Right. And I get to work with other. That's I get the best of both worlds. I get to work with an awesome artist like Andrew, and. We get to make music together and then he gets to go fucking run with it. And then I get to watch like a, the biggest cheerleader on planet earth. Because yes. <laughs> that's what friends then, are really at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, that's that to me, it's so fulfilling. And I was talking to Andrew about it. Produ producing is so fulfilling because you're watching the artists you're working with and, and how exciting it gets and how much it's connecting. And yeah. then it's just like, we're all on a high. And then, you know, I couldn't be more excited for him when, when it's out and, and now it's out, you know, yeah. Got to, we're, just, we're raising awareness for it. Yeah. So talk about the record, Andrew. I mean, you know, it's supposed to come out next year. It's going to be a full collection of songs. Is it just going to be an EP? Trevor, are you producing the entire thing or like you, you got other producers involved as well? Or what, what's, what's, what's the project going to be? Trev is producing the whole thing. And I mean, these are a collection of songs that we've been working on for a while. You know, just the nature of the music industry. A lot of things are based around the lead time on records and all that stuff, record production. You know, right now, we're kind of just building this thing so that we can get the reach that we want to get. But all of these songs are really, really personal to me. Like, um, I'm a big advocate of mental health and I've had my own struggles with mental health and addiction and all of these things that are so common these days. And I think that a lot of these songs have within them things that could help people when they hear them, you know, yeah. just like whether it's making you feel like you're not alone, whether it's providing maybe a different outlook on something that you deal with, like all the negative self-talk patterns that a lot of people go through a lot of creative people, you know? So yeah. I think it's, it's going to be a really surprising thing for a lot of people. We're bringing like, the singer songwriter kind of sentiment 
and the depth in the lyrics with like some really hard hitting rock and roll. And we've got some like, you know, more kind of crossover poppier stuff on there too, that I think, you know, people who maybe don't listen to rock and roll are going to enjoy too. Like altogether, I'm, I'm really proud of this release. This is probably not probably, this is the best stuff I've ever written. And again, I have to give it up to Trev for being such a fantastic producer and co-writer, you know, so. and friend. And uh, that, like I said, above he's a, everything. He's a groomsman in my wedding. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I mean, and I'm going to wear the most ridiculous outfit to it. So I apologize in advance, but <laughs> <laughs> as is tradition at this point. Yeah, as you should. Listen, if you're not embarrassing your friends, well, then the fuck's the point? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I know. So, so when can we expect it to come out at some point? Early next year? Maybe summertime? Can we expect the uh -huh. tour? What's the plan? Oh, yeah, no. There's going to be a tour. There's going to be a lot of live shows. We're going to be, you know, drip feeding singles and stuff. We might pop out an EP. Right now, we're still kind of building out the whole release schedule with a distribution partner, you know. Nice. The way that the music industry is right now, uh, I feel like it's very difficult to get a good label deal unless you're one of these people that has like, you know, 500 million followers on TikTok, which yeah. obviously I do not because I like to concentrate on making music, but I should probably spend a little more time on this other stuff. So, you right. know, yeah, I need to do some TikTok dances. The reality, <laughs> yeah, the reality of the business now is like, you know, yeah. you have to be an influencer at the same time as just trying to work on music. Isn't that, isn't that fucked up though, in a way? Like, it's you, so fucked up. Very fucked up. <laughs> yeah. There's like, you can't. Just, right? There's a lot of people that don't, are not the, like, the most out there, yeah, outspoken, no. fun people, but they're incredible genius musician writers. And now they have to be this, like, oh, I got to do this funny video, or I got to do this, or I got to embarrass myself, or I got to do something in order for people to <laughs> care about me, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. or like pay attention. It's it's not how we all saw this happening, but it's like, hey, man, I get it, you know. <laughs> 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 Man of many hats. Yeah. But but do you do you feel the pressure to have to be sort of like an influencer person, TikToker kind of thing to, in order to get like a deal? Or do, do you like, I just want to do my own thing and if people yeah. like it, they like it. It is what it is. I feel like if you try to emulate what another artist did to be successful, inevitably you're going to fail because there's no like, there used to be a pretty you know, decisive track in the music industry to becoming successful. And now it's like just wide open. It's like the wild West again. Mm -hmm. I think that's true to some degree, but it's also like, there are different formulaic ways that you can kind of build and grow your audience, especially across social media, but asking a more like introspective inverted, <laughs> sorry, introverted, creative person to be out there and making all these ridiculous videos and following trends and doing all this stuff. I don't know. I think to some degree, it's kind of counterintuitive. And for people like Trevor and I that grew up experiencing all of the really negative stuff that comes with fame, it's extremely counterintuitive for us because I, I, I mean, I'll speak for myself here. I can't speak for Trev, but like I'm a pretty private person. Like I don't share a lot of my personal life. You know, the stuff that I share with people is, like calculate that's what i want people to see of my life yeah just like anybody else on social media but i'm not playing up you know the bullshit like things that aren't true I'm just mm -hmm. showing you stuff that's funny and silly and goofy because that's kind of what social media is for you know right. i don't think you're yeah. too serious it, but i'm just putting up I'm propaganda for the sake of it yeah i'm loving through your your videos are classic man that you're putting out <laughs> Thanks, they are. They're goofy as hell, you know, but it is what it is. Hey, I love following you on Instagram. It's the best. I mean, come on. <laughs> I agree. Brother, like what? <laughs> well, no, listen. but I mean, you know, listen, uh, in the 80s, the musicians had to become movie stars to do MTV videos. And I've, I've interviewed many who said, I wasn't a, 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 an actor and I had to go act. And I had to. So, I mean, you know, we all have our cross to bear in a sense. And it's kind your, of like yours that, is TikTok. <laughs> that is kind of like the, 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 our version of the MTV world for a yeah. lot of like right. the Pops band. Like they were not like MTV, like they, all of it was new to everybody. And when that came around, all of a sudden, so much of your budget is being put into these videos that you have to yeah. pay back and, and it has to look cool enough to get on MTV and get attention. Um, so you're spending so much money that is kind of, they look at it because then all of a sudden you're selling all these records, but you're not making as much money as you would like, um, or you should, because you spent, you know, half a million dollars on a video. 
or so the clothes now, alone now, don't just depart. Now there's 40,000 songs being released a day. And then if you do a music video, you shouldn't really spend that much money on it. And like, you know, people are doing it on their iPhones and it's like, you know, kids are, but I got to give it for Drew. I mean, I love Drew's video. It looks like a million <laughs> fucking dollars, man. You yeah. Know? Um, and we didn't spend that much money on it. That's the beautiful thing. I don't, I don't want to like, you know, say some things I'm not supposed to say, but yeah, I mean, like there's an incredible amount of super talented people out there that can help you make things that you have a vision of. Mm-hmm. And for not that much they're cost. Not gonna, they're not going to make you mortgage uh, your house. Yeah, exactly. You know? have to reverse mortgage your home in order to do it. So I think that's also the cool thing about social media is that it's really given people the opportunity to collaborate with people that they wouldn't necessarily have been able to had that not been a thing. You know, it's, I mean, you do well, like this at, interview today. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got to know each other online basically. And we we're like, Hey, you want to do an interview? You know, and it's kind of crazy with the social media world. Cause there's like people that like will follow you, you follow them back. And you know, there are people that are like known musicians or something like that. And they hear about you, you know about them and you follow each other. Then when you actually like meet in person, it's like, they know everything about, you, you know, everything about them, yeah. the other yeah. stores. And they're so it's like, <laughs> it's like, there's no awkward. Like, oh man, how was the, uh, how was Hawaii that I saw? Dude, how was that sushi oh, on Saturday? It looked good. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's that, there's that initial, like you already know each other and that's kind of the, that's the beauty of it so your fans of like you know your music or anyone gets to get to know you better Mm -hmm. you know the only problem is there was a cool factor of the old school rock and roll world where there was this sense of uh mystery Mystery. yeah and and you're like unattainable you you hear about the story that happened in that hotel room and like you know you don't know if it's real or not Mm -hmm. but it's on everybody's snapchat story when it happens yeah now everyone's (laughs) like oh i know what he fucking ate for breakfast what are you talking about you know (laughs) And by the way, when uh, us older people meet, it's, is your shoulder still hurting? Because mine is still off. It's still, oh, How was that prostate check, man? <laughs> How was that like colonoscopy, no. bro? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, funny enough, I actually had somebody on Facebook go, I'm going in for my 13th colonoscopy. That showed up on my Facebook that I'm like, wow. I don't need did, to know that. Did it end with this, Why? It end with this month? <laughs> <laughs> yeah this month it's like i'm just doing because i like it you know yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm my 30th yeah. this month <laughs> this month yeah anyway there we go right. well listen guys it was it's always good to chat and catch up uh new singles available now uh red light appetite i mean new album coming out next year lots of exciting stuff happening for andrew and for trev i mean just good stuff man it's it's good to see uh some good dudes doing some good shit so that's what i'm all yep. about thank you guys so much but check out uh trev's new project invisible friends as well Yep. It's coming out next year. Yeah. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll do another interview to talk about that. Yeah. And a lot of, I mean, the, the other tunes, we have like, Drew and I have like about five recorded and mixed, mastered, everything like that. And we're going to be continuing to build throughout the year to maybe go towards the, uh, an LP and stuff. But, mm-hmm. but definitely these five are insanely good. So, I mean, I'm really but, proud of him and, and, and him making his own stamp in the scene and, people's reaction so far has been amazing yeah, it's been great and it's it, that's what we do what we we all do what we do you guys too it's to, to provide a beautiful escape for people to forget about the everyday bullshit and just tune in and groove and and yeah. you know that, that's the beauty of it all so when people are connecting that's what it's all about yeah right, let me ask you this real quick before we wrap up just to talk about lavar really quickly the songs <laughs> on that yeah. record who? Listen, <laughs> no, no bullshit here, okay? No bullshit. The songs Ma- on that mascot record. records what? <laughs> oh, man. Would, yeah, you ever man. Cons- would you ever consider taking some of those songs that obviously you had a big part in putting together? Would you mm-hmm. ever consider taking some of those songs and repurposing them and giving them a new life with a new artist? Nah. No? No. No, sometimes you got to break clean and no, speed Yeah, on. you got to break clean. That was a time, you know, and also at the same time that benefits those guys, and I have no interest in that. But, no, uh, more, more importantly, <laughs> yeah, I hear that. <laughs> more importantly, would you guys uh, consider calling Wolf you know, and putting it, a Van it, Halen it, tribute band in there? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I listen, if, if there's another reason of like not to do that, I tried it with uh, Toto, you know, so, uh, you know, you, you get other members, uh, family members of, of that band, you try something and you just realize, no, nah, man, let's, you know, um, we used to have Thanksgiving dinner together. Now what? You know, so it, it's, right. it's um, 
you know, those songs had its time. I'll, yep. I'll always be super uh, proud of that record. I mean, Perry coming in and doing the vocals with us, like yeah. memories that are like so unbelievably cool. Um, and, you know, uh, yeah, but we all have chapters in our life. You leave it behind. You can't go yeah. dwell in it. And I mean, I really, as soon as that whole thing went down, I was producing and I was then building up the new project and then Drew and I were working together. And I mean, like, we had to finalize a music video while we were already done. And I was working with Drew in the studio. Drew was like there with the last final edits of some video that I had to like help finalize edits with. Oh, cause we've got to give props also to Jake Hayden who played drums on the, on the record. Oh, yeah. Jake Hayes, my cousin who engineered the, the record and also did all the music videos for Lavara. And, um, so in between, we'd be like tweaking this video and it was just like, ugh, like it just, the vibe was so. It's like, oh, so I fucking hate it, these guys. Yeah. And it was just like, yeah. it, was, it, it, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, man. It's like, it's like looking at like, you know, the videos of like your ex wife or something. And you're like, it's a, you're it's like watching the wedding tape and being like, okay, what, do we have to edit this right now, man? Yeah. Like I'm already moving on here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm already fucking someone else at this point. Why do I want to yeah, go back man, and watch this? You know? <laughs> I've already upgraded. What are we doing here? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was, but all of that, I think, I mean, I got to send these guys a fruit basket. You got to remind me uh, at the beginning of the new year for, for all of, for what happened, because it, it opened up so many doors and also realized a lot about me. I, it was a lot of soul searching, a lot of realization on my end. I, you know, communications key. We all had fault in it. They they went about things really bad. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, there's nothing I could do or say that's going to ever, like, you know, the, the what ifs in people's minds, yeah. that's going to be worse than me saying, oh, F that person. I have I wish no will on any of those guys. I talked to Josh on the phone, you know, once and, and you know, it was civil, you know, and, and, and I wish him the best. I wish, you know. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, honestly, I guess that's all you can do at the end of the day. So, so that it's entirely in the past. We're completely moving on. Completely Let's just past, forget it man. happened. And, you yeah. know, it, maybe it might like, you know, as the career builds, there'll be like the collector's edition of all of this fucking thing, you know, yeah. um, the music's great. And I'm really proud of the music. Um, and I really, I really thank you both. Um, all, all three of you, but you know, Mitch, Jeremy for like, you know, I saw posts and, you know, Jeremy did the interview and, and yeah. all the support you guys showed is is uh, forever grateful for that. And and Drew and supporting Drew in, in his next chapter and what we're Drew being the it. psychologist, you know. <laughs> Doctor Drew Hagar. How many times we call Doctor Drew? Uh, people legitimately call me that. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Perfect. And just, yeah, and, and just think, if none of this works out at all, you could just call up Wolf and so you know get somebody whatever, and you do the Van Halen Toto uh, kid tour. It's perfect. Uh, get Nick Simmons in there. Yeah. Just, just oh, do the whole. God. Oh boy. <laughs> so, get Kiz, Sophie Van Simmons. Halen, Toto. Yeah. Get somebody from Journey. Get Madison. She does she. Yeah, play? I'll get my fiance in there and. Uh, yeah. and uh, start the reality show and. Uh, oh God. Dude, Wolf, that is build. Build that epic credibility, you know? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's an MTV show right here, man. No, I know. Uh, and D, D. Snyder's son, isn't it Blaze or something? He does music, too. Yeah, I think he's like a metal guy. Bring, bring them all in. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, this is yeah. much better original. I, I yeah. prefer original. We'll call music. it the Shady Bunch, you know, not the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, jeez. That is. Oh, great. that's beautiful. <laughs> Actually, that I'd go for. That I would go for. So yeah, maybe you'll have to do that. Just the yep. Shady Bunch. That's perfect. Now, let me ask you one last thing before we go, before we wrap up. What do you say to the fans that say to you, okay, listen, your dad's Sammy Hagar, your dad's Steve, uh, Steve Lucas. Why don't you get them on a, on, a, on one song, a collaboration together? We, will we see that at some point, or is it going to be strictly Andrew? It's going to be strictly Triv. That's it. I mean, I'll never say never, because that's a terrible thing, but I also wouldn't want people to be like, betting their life savings that that's going to happen because most likely that will never ever happen yeah yeah i mean my dad's doing he's going to work on a new record he called me to, to to work on a song with him so you know as far as collaboration that's usually on his end for his record um you know he we both kind of i think sammy agrees too with the true is you know our, yeah. our dads look at us of like this is your own thing and they don't even want to step on it it's not even a conversation 
You know, like yeah. if I was to ever go to my dad, be like, hey man, I want to play guitar solo on my on my Invisible Friends record. He'd be like, why? Yeah. <laughs> Why you don't need me? Like your your thing is your thing. I your dad loves my playing, and he's like, I, I wouldn't. Why would I do that? You know, Dude, um, even my dad loves your playing, man. For real, uh, he talks about it all the time. He's like, uh, man, he's a little badass, just like his dad. And I'm like, well, I love Sammy, and and, and the yeah. love between our families. I mean, Sammy, yeah. my dad, actually bonded even harder through this time of us working together. And, and actually so crazy good. enough is I went and did one episode of uh, your dad's show and played bass yeah. with uh, my dad and Kenny Aronoff and Sammy, and we played uh, Crossroads and, yeah. you know, and, and so that was a cool thing to like, you know, hang with Sammy a little more properly than, than usually when we see him, he's at a gig and it's crazy in a circus, but, um, <laughs> but you know, the support that I've seen, Sammy have too for, for Drew's new chapter and how excited he is, uh, is, is also as a producer too, is very <laughs> fulfilling for me because he should be super proud of Drew, uh, because this, this stuff is really, really, really good. And, it, and Drew's stepped up and he's now like, this is, this is me, this is my time. And mm-hmm. the support is there. And I think that's the coolest part is to see like our dads even bond over our connection as, um, as writers and writing together and working together. You know? Yeah. And I'm sure they see a little bit of themselves in you as well. Cause it's like, Oh man, I remember when I was doing that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Maybe, well, maybe listen. Sammy and dad will do something down the line, but I don't know about us. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Hey, that, we'll that's the headline right there. The, yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh shit, I fucked up. Yeah, yeah. You just took everything away from this whole thing with that oh, line. No. That is not, Trev says no, Steve right Lukather. Not yeah. ever been talked about, okay? And so but there you go. Old squash. <laughs> Blabbermouth tomorrow. Yeah. Sammy Hagar, oh, right. Steve Lukather, collaboration coming oh, soon. I see my phone blowing up right now. Like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> oh my God. No. No, oh, Andrew, they, listen. They, they, they would do some great stuff together. Yeah. Well, listen, Trev, Andrew, I love the new song. The new music video is awesome. I'm really stoked to see what you guys are going to be putting together on this record that's going to be coming out next year. Like, I'm, I'm genuinely excited about this project. Like, you know, it's 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 really cool, you know? Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I'm, I'm really, really excited. And honestly, this is, like I said, the best stuff I've ever done. I'm incredibly proud of the work that Trev and I have put into this. And uh, I can't wait for everybody else to see what we already know. You know? Yeah. It's amazing. There you go. Well, go check out the new single. It's available now. Go buy it. You can stream it, but, you know, better off buying it. Just support. It's like buying a rock t-shirt to support the band, you know. <laughs> yeah, we have merch coming out soon, so check it out. You know, make sure to follow both Trev and I on Instagram and all the socials and stuff because we're going to be updating a lot over the next, like, couple weeks, you know. Great. Awesome stuff. Thank you, man. Thank you Jeremy. You guys rule, man. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys so much for Thanks having me. Awesome really. stuff. We'll chat soon. Stay in touch. We'll see you later. Sounds Cheers. Great. Later. Peace. More than 50 episodes of the Jeremy White Podcast are available on demand. That's almost as many times as Paul Stanley yells, people, at a KISS concert. That was a joke. (laughs) Oh, you see I'm smiling. (laughs) An all-new episode of the Jeremy White Podcast, Tuesday at noon, available wherever you stream. Catch up on past interviews and episodes on demand now. Subscribe so you don't miss any of it.